Hello, welcome and welcome back to the United Mates Football Podcast. Today, as ever, I'm in the company of my co-host, Joe, and we're both delighted to be joined by somebody whose positive attitude, both on and off the football pitch, have served her fantastically so far in her life as a young footballer and a social media influencer. She's an explosive left back from Sacramento, Northern California, but in the opposite fashion to myself, these days she swapped the West Coast of the United States for the home of football, England. Paige Almanderas, welcome to the United Mates Football Podcast. Thanks for joining us, and how are you doing today? Good, thank you for having me. Um, I'm doing well. How are you guys? Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks for asking. Joe, how are you? Yeah, no, I'm very good. Very good. Had a nice Sunday walk with a mutual friend of ours earlier. So yeah, very nice in lockdown Britain, as it is bizarre. <laughs> so yes, hello Paige. Welcome um, to United Mates. Um, it's one left back speaking to another. So, you know, extra special to, um, have you on board today. Um, but yeah, we do have a little icebreaker question for you. And we believe that dancing is big in your family. I believe that <laughs> outside soccer, you've, you are quite a good dancer yourself. So what we wanted to know was if you're if you're back in the times where you could go on a night out what would be your go-to dance move what's like if you're you've had a few drinks you're having a good time what's the dance move you're bringing out oh my goodness um well I wouldn't go out on the dance floor by myself that's for sure I would definitely grab a friend (laughs) and have them come with me um oh gosh um just something to twirl my friend around. I would just twirl my friend and we'd just start wow. dancing and trying to get a lot of people going. I'm not really sure. It's kind of just in the moment kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you kind of got to go with the flow in these situations. But um, yeah, Kaito, I know at your um, your brother's wedding last year, we had a little bit of a, a dance off, which was crazy. But um, what would be your go-to dance move in some sort of crazy situation like that? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that reminds me, someone sent me a video of you in particular from that dance off afterwards, which is quite entertaining. <laughs> um, but, on, um, our social pages. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll throw that up there. Yeah. Um, otherwise, for me, it would be the floss, I think. I know that's kind of like swept there over the past go. couple of years, but it also um, sets me up for a, a dad joke that I made about the floss dance move, which is that I went to the dentist the other day and he, he told me that I need to floss more. So I've just been doing this dance constantly ever since, but it's not helping. And that's my that's my dad joke. Anyway, <laughs> oh <my laughs> moving <God>. on. <laughs> that was that was the exact response I was looking for, so I'm glad. Um, otherwise, uh, Paige, we're going to move on to a few questions about football in relation to your childhood, and then also to to school. So, yeah, I guess yeah, back to the beginning. Where did your passion for soccer come from? And then, did you have any idols from the women's or the men's game when you were growing up? Um. So. Um, my passion for it kind of started when I was around five, six, five, six years old. Um, my mom got me into it and she kind of just threw like threw my twin and I into it and she wasn't familiar with it too much, uh, cause she was more on the dance side. She was a tap teacher and we learned to tap at a young age. It was either that or daycare. So tap it was, <laughs> um, but we got into it around five or six years old and um, and we didn't get into it competitively until around eight years old. Um, and then we played competitive. I played competitively uh, ever since then and I couldn't stop playing. I loved it so much. Um, I carried on with ballet. My twin stopped doing football um, at the age of 13 or so, but I carried on um, and I just have fell in love with it since I was little. Uh, a couple of people that I looked up to were uh, Steven Gerrard. Definitely. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's such a baller. And, you know, he also led by example as well with his voice. And every time I watched him play, he would always say the right things. He would always do the right things. He would always be the one to carry the team when uh, they were down. So I think that was a huge thing. Uh, when I saw that, uh, I tried to bring that into my game as well. Growing up um, in, in, competitive football you know yeah yeah um it's interesting to hear you talk about your tap background and being a twin because I'm also a twin and I I I should say I have a a background in tap but but my mom forced me to 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 take tap lessons when I was much younger it's good for you it's good rhythm I I I wish I wish I had any rhythm but anyway (laughs) um, we're we're gonna get into a little bit more of um 
your, your social media presence uh, later. But one thing I did notice on your Instagram is that you're handy at kickups and juggling skills. And I'm, I'm a bit of a fan of, uh, of that too. I, I try to try to yeah, replicate all the skills that I see online. So they used to do a show a bit on this show in England called Soccer AM called Skill School. Uh, unfortunately, okay. we're not really set up for you and I to have a skills showdown right now. Honestly, though, you'd probably just win. So it's probably for the best. But um, instead of Skill wow. School, I've come up with Tekker's Test. And what I've got is a list of names of football tricks. Some of them are real. Some of them are fake. So I'm going to read these names to you. Oh. And I'd like you to let me know if you think that they're a real name of a football trick or a fake name. So you're about to make, expose me. Yeah. <laughs> You know, honestly, even the real names sound a bit silly. So I think anyone would struggle. But the first one is oh uh, the dislocated knee. Is that a real trick or is that a fake trick? Whoa. That's fake. Fake? Well, that one's real, actually, apparently. The dislocated knee. Is it the knee. one where, is it where they like pop the ball out, like on your, on the top of your, wait, what is it? What kind of trick I think, is that? I think it is that one where with your kind of thigh, or your knee you yeah where you pop, pop it, it back up and you yeah. oh my gosh i should have said yes because i know that trick i don't know names very well <laughs> well hopefully hope, we'll see we'll see how it goes for the rest of these but um i've got number two the the boot scoot deluxe the boot scoot deluxe that sounds like an amazing meal but yeah <laughs> like a mcdonald's here or yeah but i don't know about a that's false. Okay, you're right. That is fake. I'm. I made that up. Um, maybe I need to get into <laughs> McDonald's about yeah. Some. some other um, move number three, reverse homie J around the world. Um, that's false. That I don't one's know about real. Homie J. Apparently, homie there's J. a homie J out there, and he's he's doing it in reverse too. Um, but on to number four, <laughs> um, neck flicks and chill. Yes, you could say <laughs> oh, that. I wish Netflix and chill was like a skill where you juggled it on your neck, but that was one that I just made up. Um, otherwise, number five. I would love that if that was real. Maybe you can trademark it on your Instagram, the Netflix and I'll chill. I'll do it. I'll, you know what? Yes. <laughs> otherwise, maybe let's bring Joe, Joe in on this as well. Um, for Paige and Joe, the reverse Magellan. Is that a real trick or a fake trick? Reverse Magellan. I don't think I even know what Magellan means, so I'm going to say false. And Paige, what do you think? Okay, well, I've gotten all of them wrong. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to, I'm going to say true. Because yeah, I said... you were right, Paige. That, oh. one, that one is real, the reverse Magellan. And then I've got four more, so let's just we'll run through these. What, what is the I... reverse Magellan? The reverse Magellan apparently says two times over the ball in different directions, the same as a Magellan but the around the world directions are reversed. So if we knew what a Magellan was, it would help us know what a reverse Magellan was, <laughs> but unfortunately um, we don't. Hmm. But this next one is the, the Bambini. Is that a real move, Joe and Paige? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like you knew it. That's the one where you kind of pretend that you have a baby under your shirt and that's the, that's the yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> that's the Bambini. I've got three more. The Cheeky Nando. Nah, that, I oh, think that's a very that's clever, Nando's. Clever. Does anyone want a Nando's? Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys, you, you called my bluff on that one. And then I've got the the flat earth around the world. Uh, you true? Paige? Oh, you guys aren't responding, so I'm not sure. Oh, did you say you said false or true? I said true. Oh, oh true. unfortunately, the the flat Earth around the world. I don't even know how you could do that, but it's I false. Think, well, I was thinking. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of it as like you know when you like pancake the ball on top of your foot. Sure. Okay. okay. I was thinking that, and then you pancake, and then around the world. But I don't know. You guys have different names for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I guess yeah. I managed to trick you on that one. Otherwise, this last one is Gerbashi break dancing. Um. Oh gosh. I'm just gonna say true, but I have no idea why. Yeah, I'm gonna say true too. I don't know why I'm saying true though. Yeah, you're you're both right. Apparently you just right. like keep the ball under your foot and just break dance. And that's a <laughs> that's a soccer skill these days. That so. can be your belt page. Next time you're out, bring a football with you. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's perfect. Well, now that we've you know had a bit of fun, I guess, on the on the 
the skill subject, I do want to ask a, a quick serious question about it, which is obviously you practice this a decent amount the skills, but do you find that that transfers to any helpful technique on the pitch? Has the juggling helped your, your game in any way? Yeah, definitely. I think um, one of the things even starting at, at a young age <clears throat> was we always just kind of kept the ball up and um, just on, our, on your own, they want you to start juggling the ball as much as you want. Uh, or as much as you can even. Uh, it helps with your first touch. It helps you bring it down. It helps you get more familiar with the ball and the surfaces of your foot. Um, and definitely when I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, my dog is in here. <laughs> She's making a ton of noise. No, that's, here's, he's right next oh, to me as well. Hello. Yeah, this is Zeus. <laughs> he's a little, little potato boy. He's kind of got this round belly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, she's... don't worry about the dog. <laughs> Um, so I apologize if she barks, but, um, yeah, so I think that something that has really helped me is just kind of, it's that repetition and it becomes muscle memory, you know? Um, and when I was doing it, when I started doing these tricks, I didn't really know what I was doing. If I'm going to be honest, I was just so familiar or it was, it wasn't familiar at all. So I had to become familiar with what surface I was using, what I was doing, honestly, um, and then as like the summer went on, I just kind of started to play with the ball more. And I was like, Ooh, that was cool. Yeah. And so I just kind of continue to do it more. Um, and I have, so I, when I was training throughout in, during the summer, I definitely saw a difference in my game of the different parts of my foot I would be touching the ball with. And I never have done that before. And I would kind of surprise myself. I'd be like, whoa, where did that come from? Um, but it's, it's that repetition where it now becomes part of my game. And I think that is so cool. Um, so I really encourage everyone to play with the ball as much as you can, you know, it's your best friend. So you control the ball on the field. It doesn't control you. Nice. Yeah. No, I think that's, um, that's fair. I know um, Kai tells a big kick up fans himself. I, I I can do the odd thing as well, but actually my girlfriend's a bit better at me at kick ups. She's, um, she's oh. the over here. Yeah. Yeah. I need to post something on the page at some point, but, um, now we're just going to talk a bit about um, your time at UNLV. Um, you obviously grew up in California, but you made the move to Nevada for college. Um, I was just interested to know why did you choose um, that school and that soccer program and how was the transition from moving from home to Nevada? Yeah, so um, Vegas was definitely different from California. <laughs> <laughs> um definitely even just like the weather the heat was very very difficult to uh, get used to um you're playing in 110 degree weather um Fahrenheit <laughs> but um I think that the reason why I chose that school is you know you go around looking for the right school for you and the best fit academically as well as the girls on the team so when I first visited the, the campus, um, it's called an unofficial visit. So you meet the girls, you meet the people who you would work with um, on the academic side, and you kind of get to know what the whole program is about and why uh, or, or what they do. So I think all around, I really enjoyed what they did academically and athletically. On the athletic side, um, I think that something about it was, it was all about putting in 100% every single training. And I think that's huge, you know, um, it, that kind of just says what you do off the field as well. In the classroom, on the field, you're gonna put in 100% both ways. And so that's what that program was really about was putting 100% in everything you did. And that's the kind of atmosphere I wanna put myself around. And it's going to put me in a position for when I graduate to put 100% in everything after all of that. Um, and also the reason why I chose that school is because I got a full athletic scholarship, uh, which was amazing and an amazing opportunity. I couldn't pass up to get a free education and be able to play the sport that I love so much. Um, so, yeah, uh, definitely was difficult moving. But when a team like what I had became kind of my family, you know, it's a little bit, it, it makes things a little bit easier when you move. So, yeah. 
nice. Yeah, no, it sounds like um, it was a great team spirit in that Rebels team down in Nevada. But um, obviously, um, being in Nevada, being in Vegas, it's um, <laughs> it's a pretty crazy place, arguably one of the craziest places in the world. And being a college student is pretty crazy in itself. So what was it like to be a college student in Vegas? Were you, um, did you get to go out in Vegas much or were you, were you too busy working hard on your football? Honestly, <laughs> we weren't really allowed to go like out on like the strip. You know, also it's because it's a place where it's really only for 21 year olds. Um, and so I was 18 when I got there, so I couldn't do anything. Um, it's also, we, we kind of, we sign a lot of stuff um, from, for basically our school and NCAA where they, they kind of say, you can't really do certain things. You can't bet on things. You can't be near within a hundred feet of a betting area. Um, and a lot of that was in Vegas, but we kind of set standards for ourselves. You know, if we wanted to win, you're not going to go out. You're not going to drink. You're not going to do that during season or any of that. You have time, you have a time and place to do that kind of stuff, you know? So we really set standards and we held each other accountable. Um, so I didn't really find it difficult to be there, um, in Vegas. It's when you have something in your backyard, you don't really use it much, you know? So I think it was pretty easy for me to live there and no one that, I mean, no one got out of control where it was like a problem. So it was really nice to have that. Um, a lot of people, I get that question a lot, what it was like, what it was like to live there. Um, but it honestly was pretty chill. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't too hectic. Nice. Well, it's obviously becoming even more of a sporting city these days with um, the Raiders yeah. from the, an NFL perspective. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's going to be interesting once people can actually go and watch them in that cool stadium they've got. But, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that would be great, actually. But um, yeah, now moving on to a bit about kind of obviously you're, you're a footballer, but you also um, you're also you could, well, you, you could argue you're also an influencer as well. So we just want to ask you a few questions about that. And um, what we were really interested was when when did that kind of big spike slash kind of viral moment hap happen for you? Like, when did you go from being popular on Instagram and, you know, having people like your posts and like, you know, as we all do it to suddenly that going from that to having tens of thousands of followers? Um, so I was, oh, I think it was my sophomore year of college. We just did a picture day <laughs> and we were so excited, blah, blah, blah. And we took, I took a picture, I posted it on my social media and a college page had posted it, had reposted my, my picture. And I was like, I don't know what's happening, guys. <laughs> Why am I getting a bunch of followers? Um, I'm kind of scared. <laughs> um, and so they just kept coming and coming and coming, and different pages started to post the same picture of my friend Georgia, <clears throat> my friend Georgia and I. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Um, I, I just, I was so like, I was so stunned. I just had no clue what I would, I didn't know what to do. So I just kind of put my phone down and just, you know, I, I carried on. But uh, after that, um, I started posting more pictures um, of me playing, uh, just kind of just the team and stuff like that. And I saw people really enjoyed that. Um, and just it continued to happen where pages kept like reposting it. And I was like, is this allowed? <laughs> Are people allowed to do this? Um, so yeah, that kind of started to happen. And then slowly, um, I don't know, it just became, my page just like kind of continued to go up from there, um, which I'm, I'm very grateful for because now I'm able to use it um, in a positive way, you know? Yeah, no, exactly. And I know um, you have your hashtag um, inspire a generation, which is obviously great. And yeah, very, yeah, very, very inspirational um, as it says, but um, do now you have this platform is do you find there's more pressure for you to put content out on a regular basis or for you given that a lot of the content you're putting out is football related and it's stuff that you enjoy doing is it not is it or is it a hassle or is it actually it's fun and it's just what you'd be doing anyway irregardless of like the follower number sometimes i feel a little pressured to post something because then people get a little bit um 
too comfortable with their comments. Um, people also get very comfortable with messaging me. Um, I do check them and I do, and you know, everyone's curious what people are requesting to ask you or what to say to you. Um, and they do get to me sometimes, you know, when I, when I first started um, getting followers, um, I had a really, really hard time adjusting to it. And, you know, I didn't know what people wanted to see. I didn't know if it was like, I don't know, just a, a selfie or football or, or, or what is going on inside who I am. Um, so I really had to kind of figure out what audience to kind of speak to. Um, and obviously it's football. Um, and I really enjoy posting videos of football, um, but definitely I do feel some kind of pressure to post, to post in general. Um, you always feel like you have to keep the audience uh, entertained. And I mean, it's definitely, it, it definitely took a toll on me at some, at some point, um, just kind of in the past couple of years, uh, but it wasn't the whole time. It was just in certain moments you are just like, man, I just want to erase social media. I just want to get off of it and I want to get away from it. But other times I really enjoy it. And I really, really, really love inspiring other people <clears throat> to basically go after your dream. And that's what this whole, you know, the inspire generation, you know, it doesn't matter what generation above, below who you're inspiring. It's about being able to pick someone up when they're at a low point, high point, and keep them going. You never want to see someone fail. You always want to see them succeed. Um, and that's really where I'm trying to get at with my platform is show people that it's not impossible to go after what you love. It's not impossible to encourage others to keep pushing, motivate them. And honestly, it just is something everyone should continue to do as it is only a positive impact to others. Sounds like you might have a future as a, who knows, like a life coach or, or just a <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you definitely have some some positivity and some some wisdom to uh, to pass on. Um, but one last quick question on the the social media stuff, and that's back in in college. You mentioned earlier about NCAA rules, not necessarily getting in the way of things, but there there were rules and restrictions, and so yes. On the note of the social media, I believe that one of those things related to the NCAA is not being able to profit off of your personal brand or maybe any school related stuff as a student athlete. And so I, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm assuming that you might be in a position these days where you're able to monetize some of your content, but I would assume, yeah, that wouldn't have been the case in college. So one, is that is that true? And then secondly, if it is, was that something that played on your mind? Were you sort of frustrated at being held back in that regard during your time in school? Yes. So it, yes, that is true. Um, <clears throat> when um, my social media started to kind of go up, uh, they basically were like, Paige, put your, put your social media on private. Like my coach had asked me to put it on private. Um, and I was a little bummed because I was like, oh man, like, I kind of want to show people like what I'm doing in my life. And, you know, I felt like it was, it's my responsibility to show people what I want them to see, not anyone else's responsibility, but I also had to respect him and I had to listen to what he said. So I had to put my social media on private for a while. Um, after a bit, he was like, yeah, you're fine. You can take it off now that things are kind of under control. Um, and so it was frustrating. I was really, really frustrated that I couldn't help others. I couldn't encourage others. So I was like, felt like I was just in this like cage that I couldn't get out of. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to graduate. And then I can just kind of just go off with it. Um, but at the same time, I'm also really grateful because I was able to really figure out how to form what I wanted my social media to look like um, instead of it being just a bunch of random things, I was able to focus on one thing and really crack down on it. So I was frustrated, but I was also grateful for it. Um, and now that I have this just open freedom to kind of do whatever I want with it is amazing. And now I can encourage others, you know, and, and motivate others um, in their journey. Yeah, brilliant. 
let's move on here. We see they say, yeah, they say that what happens in uh, in Vegas stays in Vegas, but obviously since graduation, you've you've moved to England. Um, so, and even you're you're training with the London Bees in the FA Women's Championship. So you're choosing your next steps in in your career in the women's game. Why was England the destination? Um, you know what? Uh, I think that when I think of England, I think of football. <laughs> And it is the number one sport here, one of the number one sports here. And, and it's the most talked about, most watched. Um, and I think that um, when I see the women's game, I see and see the way it's growing, I couldn't help but want to come here. I was so intrigued about the way it was going up. And I just wanted to put myself in that position where I could help the women's grow, the game grow even more. Um, <clears throat> and so I really just, my, my fall semester, um, right after season ended, I left. I left and got all of my classes online uh, for my last semester and did my last semester here in England. And so I took 18 credits online while trying to find um, a way to continue my football career. You know, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I literally picked up my stuff from Vegas and left and was like, hi, England. Um, and you know what? I wouldn't change it for the world because I have learned so much about the women's game. Um, and I'm so grateful from the people that I, the people that I've met in January to now, I'm so grateful. Um, but England was a place where I knew football was going to be the main focus here. And I was just, I couldn't help myself. So I was like, let's do it. Yeah, I, I miss the um, how, how football crazy everyone in, in England is. And that, that sort of brings me on to, yeah, just this next follow up, which is, um, yeah, you moved from, from the West Coast to Nevada and then you moved from the States to, to England. So what do you miss most about life back here in the States? And then I guess on the opposite side, what do you prefer about life in England? Apart from, I guess, maybe how crazy people are about football. <laughs> you know, I think what I miss the, definitely the most um, in the States is the weather, especially in California. Um, the sun is basically my everything. <laughs> but it's okay. We have to give things up for what we love. Uh, but, um, and do you know what? The thing that I love about England is um, the culture, honestly. Uh, I know that sounds cliche, but I think learning about a different culture is so cool. There's so much history here, so much history. And I was just, I'm so intrigued and right now I'm, I'm living in St. Albans. So there's so much history here and I'm just like, it blows my mind and I'm absolutely in love with it here. Um, but, uh, I think that is definitely something I love about England. Obviously the crazy love for football here. Um, which I think that it's definitely going over to the States more. People are more aware of the women's game as well, as well as the men's. So I really, really just think that overall it's growing so much and it's so exciting to see that. Like, it makes me so happy. So I'm very, very happy with that. Fantastic. Well, hopefully, you know, have a great career here. Maybe, I mean, I'm a Spurs fan. It'd be good to see you link up with Alex Morgan at Spurs. Then you can head back <laughs> to the States and, um, yeah, go, go and do your thing over there. But um, I just wanted to talk to you. I think I said earlier, it was, it's one left back talking to another. So um, I want to talk about the left back position. So um, we had um, a few months ago, Barney and Bradley on from um, your agency that represents you. And they, um, they described you as a wing back. Um, so firstly, um, it would be great if you could describe your game to us. And then also it would be great to hear what you think are the most um, important attributes for a left back. And also at the moment, what are the things you're working on most to um, improve and yeah, further your game? Yeah, definitely. Um, so me as a player. Oh, <laughs> um, so. Um, I, I love to get forward. I think that's just one of the biggest things that I love to do. Um, it's definitely, you have to pick and choose the right moments to go forward. 
but it definitely is my number one thing I love to do. And I love joining in on the attack as it is a very dangerous thing to do, um, being a wing back. Um, I really, really like to combine in the middle. Um, I used to actually be a midfielder. So, I mean, it just, it's one of my favorite things is to combine with the midfield and then just kind of work my way up, you know, um, and then definitely having a sprint all the way back. <laughs> if we, if, if it gets cleared, you're running back as fast as you can. Um, and I think that's a very important part of your game as a wing back is speed. Your speed is everything. Um, and it's not just about being fit, which everyone has to be fit on the field. It's about how you're going to get that extra speed to be able to get in front of that forward. Um, you know, I worked with one of my absolute favorite uh, trainers over summer since for about three, three years now. Um, and he's helped me with my speed tremendously. Um, I think working with a trainer that really focuses on muscle and not just about getting big, it's about small little things. It's about small muscles. It's about small movements, um, which is really going to help your game. I think that's a huge thing. And also literally just being on the ball constantly, you know, you know, even off the field, touch a ball as much as you can. Um, do you I have, think, oh, sorry, Paige, do you have no, 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 no. any left backs in the women's game or the men's game, even that you really are looking up to at the moment and almost use as a kind of inspiration for yourself. Yes, Lucy Bronze. She is a baller. She is so good. Um, when I watched her, when I watch her play, she is she's so calm. She knows exactly where they're gonna go. She wins every tackle. And I think that is something I need to work on is the mentality of winning every tackle. You know, when I don't win a tackle, I'm like, oh man. I kind of get down on myself, but she is someone that I'm like, wow, she, even if she messes up, she's right back. She's there again. So she's someone great to look up to. She attacks, she scores, she, she finishes, she, she assists. It's, she's an unreal player and she's someone I look up to. Um, but I think that we can all learn from each other, you know? So, um, so Paige, you, you mentioned earlier um, the growth of the women's game in particular in England, and that was being something that sort of attracted you to come over here and uh, make a career in it. Um, and it kind of got me thinking a bit about why that is that the, the game is growing so much in, in England versus, versus the States where typically the American women's team is, is the best pretty much in the history of the, the women's game. So more recently, you know, like yourself, and Joe mentioned Alex Morgan, but otherwise there's Tobin Heath, Kristen Press, and others, you know, all these talented American players are moving from the States to the English game. Um, like, obviously, in the National Women's Soccer League in the States, there's still some good players, but when you look at sports like um, basketball and baseball, you know, where America is the world leader, in the same way that they're the world leader in women's soccer, you see all the people coming to the NBA, coming to the N MLB. Um, why is the National Women's Soccer League in the States not the hub for the world's best women's soccer players? Um, sometimes it could just be education, you know? Sometimes people aren't educated enough about it. And I think that just comes with just pushing it out there. Uh, recently, the reason why I also say the women's game is growing here in England is because they're pushing it to be one of the top things you're gonna be talking about. I used to type in, women's arsenal or Chelsea Everton and it would just pop up it, I wouldn't even put women sorry I would just put in Chelsea now it would it would used to just come up men's now it's women and men's and I'm like Ooh, wow so I think that's amazing you we are putting it into and we're putting it in front of you guys for you to know how much we're working towards to trying to show you guys that we can play you know, that is, it, it definitely hasn't been easy, but with the U.S. Women's National Team being the best in the world, I mean, a lot of people know about them, but are people really watching the games when there's not the women's, the U.S. Women's National Team playing, you know? We have the NWSL, but are people watching it? 
we have to put it in front of your guys's face, just how we put the men's game in front of our faces. I mean, the, that's the, that's the way it's going to grow. We have to put it in the public eye and, and, and just put it in, in, your, in your way almost. So do you think there's a desire on behalf of um, soccer, women's soccer in the States for that to happen? It is, is there, is the desire there and is the money there or do you need both for it to work or are they not close to, to either of those things? Um, do you see anything changing in the States in the near future? Or do you think that it's just going to be Europe and the English game that sort of profits off of these talented American players? So I think that we have a great opportunity to grow the women's game in the U S definitely. Um, I think it's working its way up. We just are now having angel city, um, in LA for the women's game. And wow, I am so excited for that coming in 2022. We just have, um, we have a new, a brand new team, uh, in the NWSL, uh, in 2021, they just had a recent draft, um, and I think that they're only opening up more teams for more people to play and it's only growing bigger. It's we're growing more teams for more people to see it in different cities, different States and everything like that. The fact that there's going to be a main team in LA, which is one of the hottest spots in California and well-known places that's going to grow the game significantly. So, um, I think that we really have a great opportunity in the States for it to grow in the next year or so, um, even the next couple of months. Um, and I cannot wait to see it grow. I think that also bringing over girls from women from the U S women's national team to here in England is only growing people's horizon. You know, it, it's, it's broadening their perspective on the, on the women's game. Um, by showing that they're going over to um, they're going over to England and playing, um, and so even them watching a game in, in the WSL, it's only helping us. And I say us, <laughs> as in the states, um, see that more. And you know, also Kristen Press and Tobin Heath, they're the number one jersey sold out um, with Manchester United. Uh, out of the men's as well and that is amazing to see that whether it's in England or it's U.S. they're now bringing that kind of experience over back to the U.S. and that's only gonna now help one another and it's only gonna it's it's just gonna be a powerhouse yeah I'm we, so excited <laughs> <laughs> I can hear it in your voice yeah it's good to see that you're enthusiastic about it and the people within the game are so passionate not just to further their own careers but to give back to the game that you know they're able to make a career in for themselves and to grow it so that's great to hear I was going to say that Joe and I we speak plenty about the um because we have a decent amount of guests from the states um we talk about the upcoming world cup obviously it's just the men's world cup in 2026 that's going to be um America Canada and Mexico but even just that the exposure that you know, men, women, boys, girls of any age, they're going to be seeing this in America. It's going to get a lot more coverage. So I think, yeah, we just expect the the American game for men and women to go from strength to strength. Um, Joe, I'll pass Definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah, no, it's certainly, um, certainly very exciting times. And yeah, I've been keeping an eye on Angel City. Some um, pretty impressive backers of that team as well. That's going to be a lot of fun when that team... Um, oh, yeah. Going. I'm so excited. Yeah, you're going to have to try and get on that team page, I think. You're yes, gonna... definitely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My hometown, basically. Yeah, no, exactly. no, no. We we look forward to you, um, you know, playing in their first game in a couple of years' time or whatever. But um, that actually um sadly brings us to the um the end of our show today. So um, Kaitel, special thanks to you as always. But it even actually even bigger special thanks to our guest today, Paige. Um, we um we really enjoyed chatting to you, and then um, we hope you've had a good time being our guest too. Yes, I enjoyed it so much. Thank you guys so so much. Oh, no, thank yeah. you for joining us. And um, how can our listeners follow you and basically keep up to date with everything you've got going on? Yeah, just follow me on Instagram. Um, it's my first and last name, Paige Almendares. It's my Instagram, my Twitter, um, and my YouTube channel. I do have to get posting more on my YouTube. Um, but my Instagram is my main thing that I um, am I'm, I'm on. So follow me on there and... I can't wait for you guys to 
continue joining my journey. Yeah, can't wait. And just before you you do go, Paige, while we still have you here, I had just a couple of really quick fire questions for you. So I'm just looking for like one word answers. Um, oh, hope- no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll try not to put you on the spot too hard. I know I've already had a bunch of questions for you earlier. But um, yeah, 2020 is, you know, it's come around and thankfully it, it's nearly gone. But um, how would you describe year 2020 in one word, if you could? Oh. <laughs> growth growth okay and then if we're gonna sort of like turn the page so to speak on 2020 <laughs> if you'll pardon the pun um so now that we've turned that page to 2021 again one word what are your expectations or what how would how do you think you're going to end up describing 2021 in one word hopefully success hey all right, <laughs> all right. well yeah i think hopefully let's just share that success around why not <laughs> No, that's great. And um, to everybody listening, um, please do follow us on our social media channels. Um, We are United Mates FP on Instagram, Twitter, and um, even Facebook too, or as Kai said, I would call it Facebook. And then um, (laughs) on YouTube, um, we will type in United Mates Football Podcast and you can um, watch our videos there too. Thank you very much, everybody, and goodbye.